Beautiful good evening to you and welcome to another broadcast of Apostolic Impartation. I'm Derek Bat from Dynamic Love Ministries. It's so good to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us from all over the world. Wherever you are, send us a message. Let us know where you're calling in from. And it's just so good to, to have you with us, have you together tonight. We're a family, God's glorious universal family. Just to bring the word of God to life, may this session just be a great blessing to you. If you're on Facebook, please share this Facebook with your friends, share it with your page, etc. Send a text to people, copy the link, send it out on your WhatsApp groups and your messenger groups, etc. Let's get this word of God out to many, many people. I thank God for the time that God gives us in the word, the time that God just brings us into right standing, right understanding and interpretation of the word of God. Folk, we're in the middle of a series called Mantles and Mandates. We're talking about how God places mantles upon us, especially those in, in, in the fivefold ministry and also those in the marketplace. We are mantled. We are gifted by God, anointed by God to carry a certain mantle and do what God has called us to do in executing the assignments within that mantle. And so when we, when we carry the mantle, going with that and synonymous of that is the, man, the mandate. And you cannot walk in a mandate without having a mantle. And vice versa, if you have a mantle, you must operate the mandate. Otherwise, it's, it's in vain, it's, it's wasted. So we've been talking, we've been unpacking for the last uh, six weeks, we've been unpacking some of the issues around mantles and mandates. And so tonight I want to get into a topic that many people, I think if we had an understanding of this on a deeper level, and I'm certainly digging into this because I want to understand it a little bit more, but when our understanding becomes fruitful, and not fruitless, when our understanding becomes fruitful in the Word of God concerning just this topic tonight, the anointing, how we carry the anointing, what is the anointing, we'll have a better understanding. I believe we have a far greater depth of understanding, wisdom, knowledge, and, and, and knowing how God operates. And, and some of the questions that we've had over many years will be answered if we just start to understand and unpack what God is saying concerning his anointing. Now, I know tonight we, we're just having a, a, a vicious a thunderstorm, so the, the signal where you are might be breaking up a little bit, and I apologize for that. We are streaming this into our YouTube channel, and hopefully that that stream will be uninterrupted uh, because it's coming straight out of the uh, recording software, not out of Facebook. So if you want to listen to this and, and, and what have you. I really want to encourage you to go to our YouTube page, subscribe, and, and get all, all the sessions of this series, plus the other series that we're doing, The Journey to Maturity, on a Tuesday evening. But you can watch those at your, at your free time, at your, at your demand, at your request. And I really want to encourage you to subscribe and listen to these teachings and get the Word of God richly founded in your life. Because without the Word of God, we are going to be tossed to and fro on the winds and the seas of doctrines. We'll be moved left, right, and center, not knowing where we are, how we are, or where we should go. So I really want to encourage you to get yourself established on good doctrine, sound doctrine, that is according to the Word of God. So let's get into the Word tonight. Good evening, everybody. Marty, uh, Machta, Annette, thank you so much. Suzanne, thank you for being here with us. 
um, tonight, those that were with us for a breakaway weekend. We had such a great time. And, and man, it was just fun to be away and just spend time with each other and talk and just fellowship and build together. So we really had a good time. Um, it was a little hot. It was a little... <clears throat> It was a little uh, bit of a, a, a high temperature. But I thank God we survived it. Amen? And you know, when, when the situations are not as comfortable as we want them, that really shows how, how what's in our internal man, what really comes out, and how we present and project ourselves. So without any further ado, let's get into the Word of God tonight. Let's, let's talk about the anointing. Now, I did a, I did a, a message <coughs> about a year ago uh, talking about the three anointings of David. And I'm just impressed as I'm doing this series on mantles and mandates. I'm impressed to teach that again, and I will do that maybe next week or the week after. I want to teach on David's three anointings. But tonight I want to talk about the two anointings, the double anointing. You know, when God talks about a double portion, a double anointing, I want us to just unpack that a little bit uh, from a spiritual understanding, a biblical foundational understanding. And so that we can understand how things operate. And I believe by the end of this session and possibly next week's session, you'll have a better understanding, a greater degree of knowing how God operates in us, with us, and through us. And when we get that understanding, we're going to be less likely to be critical. We're going to be less likely to take offense. We're going to be less likely to be judgmental. And this series that we're doing on a Sunday, the, the apostolic impartation on a Sunday, the journey uh, that we're walking is mantles and mandates. It's a parallel series to what we're doing on a Tuesday night called the journey to maturity. And they're both equally as important. So I really want to encourage you to get to listen to both of those series and just spend two hours a week. That's all, that's all it takes is to listen to each of these sessions over again. It's just one hour for the one session, another hour for the other session. Just find two hours a week to listen to the Word of God in these two specific areas. And I want to tell you how you'll blossom, how you'll flourish, and how God will just bring you to a new supernatural anointing and a supernatural understanding. So let's pray. Let's get into the Word of God tonight. Father, I thank you for your Word. I thank you, Lord, for that which you're doing in our lives. I just bless you and honor you, Father. I give you praise. I give you glory. I thank you, Father, for that which you're doing is just so beautiful in our lives. Lord, we want to walk in our, in our mantles, to fulfill our mandates. And so, Lord, I thank you that you teach us. I thank you, Lord, that you minister to us. I thank you, Lord, that you give us the grace, the wisdom, and the knowledge to walk it out in perfect splendor of you. And so I just want to give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that's online, those that will watch later. Lord, I pray that this word will touch lives so powerfully, so spontaneously that they won't be able to contain it. So, Lord, thank you for a changed church. Thank you for a maturing bride. Thank you, Lord, for a standing up, a rising up bride and not a weak and, and, and wishy-washy body of Christ hanging on till Jesus comes. Father, let the church arise and destroy the works of the enemy and triumph over them in it, showing the world the glory of God that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so we bless you, Lord. We honor you tonight. And we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. All right, I want to talk about the two anointings. If you have your Bibles with you tonight, why don't you please uh, get your Bible to open it. The first scripture I want to look at is in uh, the epistle of John, 1 John. I want us to go to 1 John, and I want us to look at, look at this uh, scripture in 1 John. Okay? And this is, this is so powerful. And every Christian should know these scriptures. Every Christian should have an understanding of, of, of the scriptures that we're about to read. So in 1 John, and I'm just paging through my Bible to get to 1 John. Just forgive me a moment. Praise God. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Praise God. I want to read. I'm going to just... I, I, you can read it in, in, in the whole chapter. You can read the whole whole uh, series. But I just want to pick up one verse and then I'm going to expand on it if I may. God bless you. So verse 27. But the anointing which you have received from him remains in you. The anointing that you have received from him remains in you. Now, I want us to understand that phrase a little bit tonight. The anointing of God that you have received from him abides in you. It abides in us. So the first anointing 
that we see in our lives is the anointing of God that he gives us that abides in us. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwelleth in us. Now remember, in the Old Testament, the men of God in the Old Testament did mighty, mighty deeds, mighty exploits for God. But they always had the anointing of God on them. In the New Testament church, we have the anointing of God in us and operating through us. And that's the first thing that we've got to understand as New Testament believers, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we have the Spirit of God in us. It's abiding. It's, it's set up in us. It's habitating. It's living in us. He's abiding in us as we abide in the vine. So he abides in us. That's an anointing that we get when we're born again, receive the Spirit of God at salvation. That comes into us, sealed by the covenant promise of water baptism. The Spirit of God anointing is in us, saturating us to the degree that we will allow it, the Holy Spirit, we'll allow Him to come in and take control. And we're going to get to that a little bit later. So I just want to set a foundation tonight. Firstly, we see that there's an anointing here in 1 John uh, 2.27. If you go back and you read verse 20 of the same, the same chapter in, in 1 John, in verse 20, it says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One. Some Bibles talk about an unction. My Bible talks about an anointing from the Holy One, from God. So we have an anointing given to us by God. It's in us. We have received the power. Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so we need to understand tonight that there's an anointing that God gives us, releases to us, that abides in us. Okay, you all with me on that? You okay with that? That God has given us a level of anointing. It's the abiding power and the abiding presence of the Spirit of God in us and through us. Now, the, the fruit of the Spirit are connected and interrelated with that anointing that abides in us. And if you listen to the series, uh, The Journey to Maturity, you'll see how we articulate that. And I really want to encourage you to get across and listen to that series on our YouTube channel as well. If you've missed it on, on, on its broadcast when it airs, please go and listen to that on our Facebook uh, YouTube channel or go back and look at it on Facebook. So there's an indwelling power of God that comes on us. Now, the anointing, this is the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. The indwelling presence. I mean, just listen to that phrase. The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And that's the powerfulness of God. That's the powerhouse of God. And we've got to get to that place where God is just doing the awesome things that God is doing. And so we bless God for that re receiving of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, folk, I know, and I'm just being told that the broadcast on Facebook is breaking up. So I'm going to cut that feed so that it's not unpleasant for you. And I'm going to uh, continue recording uh, across on our YouTube channel. And I do apologize that you can't watch this on Facebook. But please go and listen to it on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe and listen to that channel. And we thank God for that. So let's carry on. Father, thank you for your anointing that just continues tonight in Jesus' name. So this is the indwelling. The, the Spirit of God that abides in us is the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. We've just said in Romans 8, the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwelleth in us. And you know, many times we've got to make this mind shift. We've got to make this mental uh, transition from having... We think God is with us. God is all around us, which he is. 
But we have to start, I understand, as, as spiritual beings, as spiritual creations in the Spirit of God, made in the likeness and image of Jesus, that we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. We have the Holy Spirit abiding in us. We have the power of the Holy Spirit in us, abiding in us, wanting to work out through us into a lost and a dying world. This anointing teaches us concerning all things. The Bible says, if you go on and you read in, in verse 27, 28 of 1 John, it says, this is the spirit that teaches us all things, abides in us and teaches us all things. The anointing is the power of God that changes our natural characteristics. You see, when the spirit of God is dwelling in us and we're, he's abiding in us, he starts to change the house. Because well, our body sees the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's his body. It's his temple. So he starts to change things around in our temple to make it more aligned or more conducive to the Spirit of God, how he wants to operate and how he wants to activate through our lives. And the fruit of the Spirit are some of the things that are driven in our lives and, and portrayed in our lives to show that our character and our characteristic, our DNA, has began, begun to change. And so that is an anointing that is on our lives that is so fundamental to the way we act, the way we behave. And I want to come back to that in a little while, so, so don't lose your place. See, the anointing, this anointing that abides in us will guide us and counsel us. It's the Holy Spirit. He will guide us. He will counsel us. He will steer us. He will direct us according to our character and our natural ability in life to be like Jesus. This is not something that's mystical. This is not something that, that is out there too high for us to attain. This is God by the operation of the Holy Spirit, changing our life in many, many facets of our lives, hundreds and different things in our lives. God is busy changing because he wants us to be in his likeness and his image. And so that the anointing that God gives us for that, the anointing that allows us to operate in that essence, is the anointing that God is speaking about here that abideth in us in 1 John uh, 2.27. It's an anointing that abides in us. Amen. That anointing talks about the power of God to change, to transform, to renew, to redeem. It's the power of God to do all of those things in our lives. And then there's a second anointing. And they're not equal. They're not one superior to the other. But there's another anointing of the same Holy Spirit, but operating in a different form, a different fashion. And that's the anointing that Jesus spoke about in Luke chapter 4, coming from Isaiah chapter 60 and 61. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach, teach, and all the things that it says in Isaiah 60. So we see from the Old Testament, there was an anointing like they had, and we've seen that in the, in the uh, people of the Old Testament, the men of God that were used mightily in the Old Testament. There was an anointing that came upon them, and they did supernatural things. Jesus said when he was quoting Luke in Luke chapter 4, he was actually quoting Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has commissioned me to do the things that, he's, that, he's, that he was saying there, to raise the dead, to heal the sick, the, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what was that? There was an anointing on his mantle. The anointing brought a mantle on his life that allowed him to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Remember earlier we said that the fruit of the Spirit are from the abiding anointing in us. The gifts of the Spirit are operated through the anointing that comes upon us on the mantle that God has placed upon us to operate in those giftings. And many times, sadly, I hear a lot of people in the church talking about they've got the gift of this and they've got the ministry of this. No. 
I'm sorry to say to you tonight, that's not quite biblically correct. It's God's anointing. It's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's not our gifts, folk. They are in the mantle that we wear. We know a mantle refers to a cloak. We've done that in session two of this series. The mantle talks about a cloak. It's not an office per se, although in the Bible, the translation, they've used the word office numerous times. But it's not just to, see, to walk in your mandate is to walk in an office. To have the anointing is to walk with a mantle. And that's where the difference between office and mantle come from. The office talks about the mandate. The anointing is in the mantle that God places upon us. And so that anointing, that abiding on us. So we need to understand there's two different types of anointing here by the same Spirit. There's the anointing both from God, both poured out by the Heavenly Father, praise God. But there's an anointing that abides in us, which is from God. And there's an anointing on us, on the mantle in which we carry, that is also from God. They're both anointing. Now, there's a, there's a difference if you study in the Hebrew words where the, those words anointing are mentioned in, in Luke 4 and in, in 1 John uh, 2. There's a different word used there for the anointing. Now, the one anointing from Luke 4 and Isaiah uh, 60 is the anointing that comes upon us and it talks about an anointing oil a, an, an ointment that is rubbed on and it infuses for a purpose that's the anointing that we carry on a mantle that's the anointing that allows the power of God that is operating in that mantle to flow in the gifts of the spirit of God and do mighty things now God still needs us to operate see God still needs to be us to be obedient because remember a principle of God's word, he operates through the church. He doesn't operate independently. He doesn't operate uh, alone, alone and selfishly. God operates through the church. And that's why he had to, he sent Jesus to redeem the church, to buy the church back out of sin so that he had a vehicle in which to operate through and not just operate on. And that's one of the fundamental differences of the new covenant that God operates in us and through us. And so when we start to see the second anointing and we see the difference between the two anointings, and this is where we start to get an understanding, this is where we start to get where God is saying there's a fundamental difference. Have you ever wondered why you can have somebody that's magnificently anointed by God to preach, to pray, to prophesy, to, to speak life and move mountains, raise dead, the sick are healed. I mean, there's supernatural manifestations on their life, but then in their personal life, there's a few things that are not straight in their lives. You know what I'm saying? There's a few things that their character is just off. And unfortunately, that character, that's what we're doing you know, on, on the other series, on the journey to maturity, we've got to get the character in line with the abiding spirit of God that is living in us. But you see, you can carry this great anointing, you can carry this mantle of anointing that's doing mighty works for God, pouring out His Spirit, touching lives. And then in your, in, outside of that, there's sin and there's all sorts of demon activity and all sorts of wrongfulness running around in people's lives. Because the two anointings want to work together. But the gifts of God, the anointing that comes on us on the mantle is without repentance. And sometimes we misunderstand, we misinterpret the difference between the anointing that's on us on the mantle that we carry and the anointing that's in us that's abiding forever and ever. You see the one, they're both of God, but the one we have a, 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 a say, we have, an, uh, we have a part, a partnership in that, that our life and our character needs to align to what the anointing of God wants to do in our lives. And so, folks, that's why, and if you understand this, you won't be so offended when, when you get this guy that's preaching, he's a great preacher, and then there's an area in his life that doesn't quite measure up to what you and I think or what the standard of the Bible says for a Christian to act or do. And you think, what's going on? But he's so anointed, he preaches such a great word, and he lays hands on the sick, and there's such an anointing, such a healing anointing. There may be. Because that's the anointing that comes on him, on the mantle that he carries or she carries that allows those miracles, signs, wonders to move and freely operate. But in their personal life, 
the abiding presence of God, they may not have given control to the Holy Spirit in every area and facet of their lives. So you can have a preacher that at six o'clock on a Sunday night is on his on the platform preaching and, and, and the power of God is touching lives, etc., etc., etc. And then during the week he's living a lifestyle that's not true to the Spirit of God. He's living a lifestyle of lying, deceiving, cheating, maybe, maybe he's doing some dirty, crooked business deals or whatever. That's because he hasn't allowed the anointing that abides in him to have full control over his nature and his character and his ability. But he's got an anointing when he puts on that, that anointing, that mantle of anointing to preach, pray, and prophesy. Man, that thing is without repentance. It covers our sin. It covers our transgression. But in, when we take that off, when that's released, and we're just in our normal lifestyle, the guy doesn't measure up. And when we start to understand that as a fundamental issue, that we need both anointings in our life. We need both the power of God on our mantle, on our man to function in our mandates, and we need the anointing of God to be in our lives, to change our character, to change our ability, and make us more like Christ in this world. And they both, we need them. Now, I'm not going to go into all the, all the Greek and Hebrew tonight. You can look all those up. But it's interesting to see how God says, I've anointed you. I've anointed you. That anointing is for signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, what happens, you see many Christians, when things are not going well in their natural circumstances, in their home or, or in their business, in their ministry, wherever it is, they get this guilt trip that, no, the anointing of God is not on me. And I'm not walking in God's anointing. Because they haven't realized the fundamental difference that there's the two anointings. The one anointing is on the mantle and the other anointing is abiding in us and is giving us the power to be transformed and to be changed and to be renewed and walk as Jesus walked on this earth. And that's why the journey to maturity is so, so important because we're talking on that series purely about the anointing that abides in us to change our life from the inside out. And that's what God wants for us today is to walk in that power that our life is changed from the inside out, that we are a vessel, we're a carrier of anointing so that the anointing can come on us the anointing on the mantle, the anointing on the mandate can come on. The anointing that abides in us and the two can work together with great power and great fervor because where there's a unity, God commands his blessing. You see, we've got to get to a place as the body of Christ in our maturity that our anointing that is abiding in us, the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is abiding in us has changed our character, it's changed our disposition, it's changed our outlook and our attitude and all those things that we are so mature that at any time that other anointing, the anointing that comes on us, on the mantle that we carry, can saturate us for God's good work. Now, the second anointing that comes upon us, when you look at that in the, in, in the original, it talks about the weightiness of God's presence. The weightiness of God's presence. So when that anointing comes upon us, you see, we often hear preachers and, and sometimes people use this expression, the anointing was so heavy tonight. Well, the weightiness, the Bible talks about the weightiness of God's presence coming upon us. You can't act in the old nature and the old lifestyle when that weight of God's presence comes upon us. And you see, and that's why, as, a, as, a, as an example, when, I, when I'm looking at the fruit, because everything that God does produces fruit. Everything in our lives bears fruit. Now, some fruit is not good fruit, while other fruit is. So when you see a, a meeting or something like that going off into the tangent, into the flesh, man, that, there's a presence there for sure, but it's not the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because if it was the presence of the Holy Spirit, there'd be a weightiness of the anointing. There'd be a weightiness of the glory of God. And no flesh can stand, the Bible says, in the glory of God. So when the glory of God is in the house, 
Flesh cannot participate. Flesh just gets on its knees and bows before God and repents. If we go back in the Old Testament, the cloud filled the temple. The ministers, the Bible says, could not minister because of the cloud. It wasn't mist. It was the weight of God's presence, His glory. So when you go back into Isaiah chapter 60 and chapter 61, and it says, the glory of the Lord is upon me, what he's saying is the weight of the presence of God is upon me. Therefore, I can. See, it's talking again about the mantle to function in the mandate. It's the mantle to release the mandate. It's not about us. It's not about us. It's never been about us. God loves us so much that he gave us an anointing, an abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, that we can be changed into righteousness, we can be changed into the right standing with God, we can be washed, cleansed, sanctified by the blood of the Lamb, live a righteous lifestyle, have the fruit of the Spirit operating in our lives. That's all what God wants in our lives for us, so that he can place the mantle anointing on our lives, so that we can function in the mandate that God has called us to function in. But you see, if we don't get the first anointing, the abiding anointing in us properly, we don't understand the abiding anointing, it's going to be difficult to walk in the mantle anointing. And that's what we need to understand tonight. God says, I want you to operate in that abiding presence of God. Now let's just think about it for a moment, that abiding presence of God. Where, what is in the abiding presence of God? Well, I can tell you for sure the fruit of the Spirit of God will be in the abiding presence of God. The love of God, the joy of God, the peace of God, the goodness, the kindness. All of those attributes of the Spirit of God will dwell in us because they are the fruit of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. I see just, I think it was last week, the old Pentecostals used to have the saying, baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Well, while that is true, and it's one of the attributes of being filled with the Holy Spirit that you begin to speak, speak in a heavenly language, a, a, a spiritual tongue. But I would rather say, let's rather align to, to being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of a changed lifestyle, a changed nature, a changed character into the likeness and image of Jesus Christ, walking in the abiding presence of God that is in our lives tonight. And that's what God wants for us and through us so that we can portray Jesus. You see, you don't need an anointing of God to come on you to love somebody. That abiding anointing is already in us. We don't need the anointing of God to come on us so that we can walk in peace in a, in a stressful situation or a, uh, whatever type of uh, circumstance we're in. That abiding presence in us will come out and it brings peace and joy and love and the goodness of God because it's abiding always in us forever and ever and ever. The two types of anointing, the abiding anointing and the presence of the anointing on the mantle that we carry are two separate facets. They're one anointing, they're one Holy Spirit. I'm separating them for the point of teaching and explaining. But I want you to remember it's all one, the Holy Spirit, the facets of the Holy Spirit. When you talk about the seven spirits of God in Revelation, they are still one Holy Spirit operating in different facets, different mantles and mandates over many, many people's lives. I carry a different mantle of, and a mandate as an apostle as somebody who carries a mantle and a mandate as a prophet. They carry a different mantle again as those that carry the mantle of a teacher or of a pastor or of an evangelist, etc., etc. They are different mantles, but they're the same spirit. And we've got to start and learn to operate how we understand and discern by the Spirit of God what is the mantle that that person carries, what is the mantle that is housed upon them to walk in the gifting that God has called them to walk in. That's their mandate. But both of whatever the office and whatever the, the mantle that you're carrying, whatever the ma mandate that you're given needs to be founded on the abiding presence of God, the anointing that abides within us. Remember, God says he, he can't work with flesh. The flesh can't work in the, in the, be in the same spot as the Spirit of God. 
So we've got to die to flesh. We've got to be crucified with our flesh. And how do we do that? By allowing the abiding presence of God, the anointing of God, to come into our lives and start to change us. Are we perfect? Are we finished this walk? Absolutely not. But are we on a journey to maturity? I sure hope so. And every day, God shows me more and more where I need to mature in other things and other areas so that I'm not walking in my old nature, my old carnal abilities and trying to work it out for myself. But I'm walking in the power, the purpose and the presence of God with that abiding anointing that's in my life. So now when we start to understand that abiding anointing, we realize that it's a separate facet of the anointing that comes on us to carry the mantle of the fivefold ministry or the mantle of healing, the mantle of deliverance or whatever those mantles are that you're operating in, that does not necessarily directly align only to what you are in the abiding presence of God. That's why we can see some great preachers fall from grace. Why? There was a great anointing on their lives. Why all of a sudden did something happen? Did something slip? And I'm not going to mention any names tonight. But when you look at those folk, what it was was they carried a great mantle of anointing for their assignment and their mandate given to them by God, a portion to them by the Spirit of God. But the abiding presence of God was also in their lives, but they didn't surrender every area and every facet of their lives into that Spirit of God, that abiding anointing. And so there might have been some areas in their life that still they had control over or they gave those controls to other people or the devil and God didn't have control over those lives. See, every time the Spirit of God is lifted, all hell wants to break loose. And that's why we've got to make sure that we walk in the abiding presence of the anointing of God 24-7. It's not something we just put on when we go to church on a Sunday or when we want to get up and go minister or switch on and do a broadcast. We live in the abiding presence of the Almighty. We live under the shadow, the weight of his presence filling our lives. So as we look at the anointings tonight, the abiding anointing, as I said, talks to our, our, our DNA, our character. The abiding anointing gives us our values and the characteristics of Christ. If we don't have all the fullness of the abiding anointing, we, we, we will be prone to act like the world acts, even though we don't want to. And there's many Christians that are acting worldly, not because they want to, not because they're willingly or voluntarily sinning or, or rebelliously sinning. It's because the, that abiding anointing hasn't been allowed to have free reign in every area and facet of our lives. Because we've, we've thought that because we've got an anointing on our mantle to preach and teach and, and be this five-star, wonder-star, that we don't have to worry about our inner man and our personal growth and development. And that's not true. They're two separate facets of the anointing of God. One is working on us, on our mantle and mandate. The other one's working in us, the abiding presence of God, to form our character, to make us more like Jesus. Amen? See, the anointing can come on a donkey and a donkey can work. Just ask Balaam. God doesn't need man, but he chooses to work with man. And so tonight we need to have a, an understanding that we live in an abiding anointing. That abiding anointing sets us free. That abiding anointing is not heavy. That abiding anointing is the joy of the Lord, the blessing of God. So tonight, I trust this has blessed you. I don't want to go into more detail. We'll do that next week. But I, I want you to understand tonight there's two anointings. There's two facets to the anointing. There's the abiding anointing and there's the mantle anointing. Elisha, when he picked up that coat, when he picked up that mantle, he took on a mantle anointing. Without that, he was just who he was. You and I need to make sure that we're living in the abiding anointing of God that it's changing our character, it's changing our nature, we're surrendering to Him so that we can be ready to carry that mantle anointing that He puts on our lives. May you be richly blessed. Thank you for listening to this broadcast today. I trust that it's blessed you. I trust that it's stirred your heart. We'll get into this a little deeper next week when we talk about David's three anointings and you'll see why God gave David three different anointings. Those were assignment anointings. 
So we will deal next week with assignment anointings and just not the general abiding anointing or mantle anointing. We're going to talk about assignment anointings. So may you have a beautiful evening. I trust that you're safe and you're well, that you love the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and all that is within you. Until we're together again, may God bless you, prosper you and keep you safe. And remember, Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless.